Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hello, Explorers. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 156 of the podcast. I've recorded this intro early on December 18th because as this goes out, I'm hanging out with my family for the holidays. For you this week, I put together another compilation episode. Let's dive into how 12 unschooling parents answer the question, what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? I really enjoyed pulling this episode together. It's so interesting to hear these answers side by side, and I hope you enjoy it as well. And as always, I want to thank everyone who has chosen to support my unschooling work like this podcast and my website through Patreon. I deeply appreciate all my patrons. Their generous support is vital to helping me freely share information and inspiration with anyone who's curious and wants to explore the fascinating world of unschooling. If you'd like to join my community of patrons and scoop up some great rewards along the way, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash exploring unschooling. Now let's dive into surprises on the unschooling journey. This is from episode 36 with Lauren Seaver. Um, we might have touched on this before, but what has surprised you most about your journey so far? Yeah, for me, um, especially I come from that teaching background again. And like the biggest surprise for me about unschooling has been that unschooling is not really about learning. Um, it's not about education. And I mean that in a respectful way. Like I, it's I, I don't mean to belittle the learning that River is doing it and that I'm doing with our lives. I, like we are learning so much more than I ever imagined we, we would learn. But it feels totally secondary to um, it, like a benefit that occurs along the way. But um, to me, unschooling is about living and about joy and about our relationships, like you said before. And like, that has been the biggest surprise for me because I was coming into it thinking, oh, this is how we're going to, he's going to learn the things he needs to learn just like he would have at school. But instead it's really, no, this is just our life. And this is how we enjoy living. And I, I can't, I don't know. It's, um, there was, I was in a Facebook conversation with Ann Omen and she wrote in a comment, um, the learning is a byproduct of the living. And I was like, yes, that's exactly it. It's just that by living these wonderful, excited lives, um, you know, and we have our own issues and struggles at times, of course, by living through all of the, all of life, um, we are learning so much, but it's, it's just, it's not, that's just a piece of it. It's like, it's, I don't know. It's so beautiful and it's so wonderful. And it's so rich. And it's so much about just us celebrating being together and our lives together and what we love. It's about so much more than learning. That was a surprise to me. Yeah, I think um, at first we we think of, of learning as, as you know, the lowest common denominator. You know, that's what we go to school. It, it's for the learning. Yeah. It's for the learning. Yet once we start living it and yeah. seeing it um, in the wild, maybe, is a way to put it, <laughs> is you see there's actually more. There's roots to learning. There's a foundation that li- a foundation of living and relationships and connecting yeah. and trust and everything that lies at the foundation beneath yeah. learning. So instead of focusing on the learning, when we focus on yeah. um, creating that strong foundation, like the learning is the byproduct that just kind yeah. of bubbles up out of it, right? And it's so beautiful. And I would never diminish the importance of that learning, but it's like the like you said, the relationship. Relationships. I I just am in awe of how close we are and how it's it's something I take for granted now almost you know how close we are but it's it's the byproduct of unschooling and living this life so it's so awesome mm-hmm. that's all it's so much more awesome than I thought and I already thought it would be awesome so that's so good <laughs> it's awesomer <laughs> it's awesomer than I thought it would be which is so great. <laughs> 
This is from episode 51 with Luminara King. What has surprised you most about your unschooling journey so far? I love this question. This is a really good question. <laughs> I had to think about this. I, 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 yeah, I thought about this. Uh, I think it relates to what we were just talking about. Actually, I, I'm just amazed how much um, our children are learning, what, considering they've been left alone. And, <laughs> and you know, it, and it, it, I find it astounding. And I, and you know, I see it in other children as well. Um, that they find how if they are left alone, that they they are uh, how resourceful they are and how fa- fascinated they are in the world and their curiosity. I mean, it it's just never ending, um, and that they can go out there themselves and you know they can find what what they want. You know, again because of technology, that's that's really helpful, but. It never stops. It's kind of from constantly from one thing to the next thing. It just all rolls into one. And, you know, I, I find I find that really fantastic to stand and watch that unfold. I know it's it's beautiful, isn't it? It's it's amazing when you're not on top of them controlling. I think I, I, uh, Carlo Ricci calls he uses the phrase children are capable, mm-hmm. you know, and we don't see that until we give them the space to be capable to do things right to make some choices and to actually do things and it is just brilliantly amazing how capable they really are when when they're given the opportunity isn't it let's hear from anna black in episode 67 what has surprised you most about your journey so far um, I made a little note here and, and I've just put that it's worked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know my kids are still only young, but, uh, you know, they really did learn to read without being taught. You know, they, they really, um, they really are lovely people, uh, that I think much, much better people than I am, um, mm-hmm. The idea that just you know, as imperfectly as I managed to do it, that allowing them and supporting them to develop into who they are uh, is working. It's they're they're confident, they're happy, they they've got fantastic relationships with each other, and with both of us, they're very different, the two of them, but they get along. They just adore each other and are really kind of really connected and and protective and they argue sometimes but nothing like nothing like what I see some siblings and with the with how different they are in personality um Mm -hmm. I think that could easily have happened if they had had that sort of separation of school so that's something I'm really grateful for so yeah I think how how it really does work and it's I don't know I don't know if it's easy. We say it was easy. It's hard to quantify. It is. I just, I loved that response that is where you, because, you know, when you first hear about it and you first hear about, you know, the lifestyle and, and uh, other unschooling kids and everything, you go, wow, you know, is that even possible? Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's that first trust, you know, okay, I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It's just right. like, Wow, it does work. Yeah, it does. And and you know, we've still got long, you know, we've still got many years ahead of us, but um they're just You've got that foundation. Yeah, and yeah, they they they're such they're such amazing people. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm just glad I get to spend lots of time with them. Um, and I guess on that easy piece, you know, I guess it all depends on on whether you consider it work. I mean, for me, I think of it as easy, as in I'm always engaged with another person. So it's not me trying to figure stuff out on my own, right? So Mm. in that way, it's easy because I'm in relationship with them and I'm connected with them and we're all figuring stuff out together. I mean, like you said, they're they're pretty brilliant and they have great ideas and and you know what I mean? So it's always 
a give and take and we're in this together. Um, so I'm never like all alone trying to figure stuff out, which mm. seems harder, you know? So, but I mean, if you're expecting, you know, for your kids to tie their shoes and, and do that all on their own and that from the moment they're born, um, the whole point of, a, of being their parent is to get them further oh, to need you less and less and less. Yes. That that could be hard, you know, I if that's your you. goal. But when when you um drop that need and just uh connect with them and be with them, it's it's pretty amazing and, and not so hard. It it's just yeah. time, but it's time you're choosing, right? That's what you're choosing to do with your time. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. And ah uh, I don't know, I I have plenty of friends who have kids at school and that doesn't look any easier to me it looks a lot harder in many ways yeah yeah because you're not doing because you're trying to get people to do things that they don't want to do I mean even yes. the parents the parents don't want to be standing over you know making sure the homework's done you know so it's not so much of it isn't fun for anyone involved at least we're we're having fun with the things that we're choosing to do right <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's so cool. This is from episode 93 with Robert Gottlieb. So what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? Well, you know, looking back, it's not surprising now. But at the time, you know, I, I was, you know, even though I was confident starting out, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work. Right? You know? <laughs> it's like this is all uncharted territory. I'm not completely uncharted, but just, you know... As we've moved along in time, there's more and more people unschooling. But at the beginning, and same for you, as you mentioned, you know, there were very few people doing it. And or it felt like there were a lot less than maybe there were because, you know, we weren't communicating as, as well as we are now um, mm -hmm. through various uh, social media and so forth. But I think the big surprise for me was, you know, watching them grow and develop and and all of these different, you know, like my daughter asking me out of the blue, all these different things. And these, you know, like the math problems I was talking about, but also her ability to take context in English. That is, our, our, our language is not one of the easiest ones to learn. And she's never been officially taught anything about English, uh, reading, writing, nothing. Uh, well, writing, she actually asked to learn how to write her letters, even though <laughs> we're all typers. So. <laughs> but, you know, she did that. Um, but as far as reading goes, she did that because of all of her online, you know, uh, forums that she participated in or the role playing or whatever. And, and kids would correct her grammar along the way. So it's kind of neat how that all just organically worked. But I think that was one, one part of the surprise. The other was just her um, ability to put together concepts that I thought would take more. Um, not that she would never be able to learn them, but it would be later on or that it would be. Uh, with, you know, help from me or my wife, but there's just things that she comes up with ideas, you know, of, of what she wants to do or, or, you know, looking at the world around her and, and correctly assessing it and just stuff like that, that I, you know, I didn't know that she would even be paying attention to. And I think that kind of surprised me. That's such a fascinating piece, isn't it? Because we, we still have even, we still have expectations on, um, what we think kids can do and and we say you know we we realize the value of of having a, a human relationship with them right not not a power paced adult child relationship but yeah when you see what they're capable of just in um thinking and and making connect not even just capable in the things that they can do but in the thinking that they can do and the creative connections and the way they can see the world it just kind of blows your socks off doesn't it oh yeah and then and, you know the 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 typical thing of most parents is to have this you know golden path laid out for their kids right they're going to mm -hmm. learn this they're going to learn and that they're going to do this they're going to do that and, you know, there's all these things. And, and even as I talked about earlier, how they're dabbling in a bunch of different things, the big mistake, you know, that I, I, I would get into here and there that I, I learned not to now is, you know, oh, she's going to be, a, a, you know, a yeah. fashion, you know, whatever. And it's and I didn't fortunately, I never opened my mouth and said anything to her about it. But but, you know, the thoughts were there and that that can cause problems if you're not careful about it. So 
you know, the key is she's going to be a human being and she's going to be a happy human being that knows how to learn. <laughs> that's, that's really. All yeah. And there you go. <laughs> that's where the value is, right? Yeah. Let's hear from Heather Lake in episode 101. What has surprised you the most about your journey so far? I think really it's, I mean, a few things come to mind. I, I am surprised at how much we love it and how much it's added to our family. You know, it's, it's when you take a unconventional choice like this, you know, it's kind of like just jumping off cliff and you're like, mm -hmm. I really hope we like this and I really <laughs> hope it goes well for us. And um, it's been really amazing to just let go and see where their interests are. And we've just loved it so much. And that really they've, how quickly they've regained so much of their curiosity and them seeking out information from the world around them. And there's just, I think it's, it's been surprising to see how much learning they totally do on their own. You know, it's like you read it in theory, you know, especially when you're starting out, the kids will learn from the world around them. But it surprised me to actually see them learning totally on their own with, with, you know, no direction or force, no force at all. Mm -hmm. And just to see them doing that has just really, I mean, I knew it was supposed to happen I know. <laughs> you know, to actually see it happen is like, it's amazing. And like, um, well, I have like two stories I can think of on that. Uh, my daughter, uh, Hattie, who's, six, she, uh, she had told, she went, had gone to kindergarten and she had told me very specifically that she did not like math. Like she wasn't good at math. And that was in kindergarten. Like she felt like she wasn't, wasn't mm -hmm. good at that. And that really kind of, you know, broke my heart. I thought, oh gosh, how has she already gotten that message that she's not good at something when she's six, but she was playing with those, you know, those little story cubes that kids have. And they can, they have different pictures on them and they can toss them around and make different stories uh, with the pictures. She was, mm -hmm. she was playing with some of those and I just was watching her playing with those and she kind of had them all in a row and she just was looking at them and she just looked at me and she said, do you know that if I take two away from seven, that there would be five? And she just looked at me with such like curiosity about that. And it was <laughs> a beautiful moment for me because, you know, anyone can help a kid memorize, you know, what seven minus two is. I yeah. mean, do drills on that all day. But to just see her little brain was just working on, on story cubes, you know, to be like she, you could see that that concept, you know, was entering into her head and. I, I love that it's not memorization, you know, that you can mm -hmm. just forget later on, but it's the actual concept of numbers. And I just thought that was so beautiful. And then we were with our, uh, our people that we go to the woods with every week. We went on a hike, uh, the other day and the kids had run up ahead of us and they had come to a sign and these kids were all like six or seven and they're all unschoolers and, they were, they had their uh, fingers, they were feeling the sign and feeling the letters on the sign. And so I came up after them and I said, okay, does anyone know what the sign says? Because I didn't know who could read and who couldn't read. And none of the kids knew how to read. So they said, oh, no, we, what does the sign say? And so I kind of, you know, I put my finger underneath the words and I said, it says no access allowed beyond this point. And one of the kids said, oh, so that means we can't go this way. And I said, yep. And he said, oh, okay. So this whole little herd of kids takes off and they go running down another <laughs> uh, another trail. And they climb up to the top of this hill. And I'm kind of right behind them. And to you know, they got to a fork in the road. And the right-hand way had that sign again. And so one of the kids looked at the sign and he said, that says no access beyond this point. And it was like just seeing them, you know, how meaningful that was, you know, reading to them was helping them on their hike, 
Yeah. You know, and no one was forcing them to learn or forcing them to learn how to read, but it just, that was meaningful for them on that day. And they were just picking it up, you know, and reckon, starting to recognize letters and words. And it just made me smile. You know, I thought, oh my gosh, this is what we're going for, you know? And so it's, you know, even though, like I said, you know that you hear in theory <laughs> that kids mm -hmm. learn. It surprised me how uh, how much they do just every day learn totally on their own with no one forcing them to do it. And I think uh, I've been surprised, too, with myself. You know, our paradigm has really shifted to where you know, we're the, my husband and I are learning with the kids. Like I have learned so much <laughs> this last year. And I, I remember right at the very, very beginning, um, of unschooling, I think we were cooking and, you know, everyone always talks about cooking as a great way to incorporate, you know, real life math. And I think we were needing to add some fractions together. And I had like this panic moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to add these fractions together. And I'm like, my heart's racing. And, mm -hmm. and then it was like, okay, well, I can, that's okay. I can learn with them. You know, I don't have to have <laughs> all the answers. But I think that's kind of a school mindset that I still had that, you know, whatever you know when you graduate from high school or graduate from college, like your learning is now done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you forget or if you didn't pick something up, then, well, you're never going to know it. So it was yeah, that that's your moment fault. <laughs> of like, okay, that's okay that I don't know how to do that. We're going to sit down together and we'll figure it out together. And just, oh my gosh, with so much stuff, you know, we just being, you know, the paradigm isn't like I'm up here and the kids are down here and, you know, I know so much and you know, so little, it's like, you know, they know a lot more. I mean, Gavin knows a lot more about making movies, you know, than I do. And they, they each have things that they're so knowledgeable about. Like, uh, Hattie's really interested my six year old in being, she loves animals and she wants to be a veterinarian. And, uh, so we'd seen something on TV about doing stitches. They were showing a vet doing stitches um, on an animal. And she said, I want to learn how to do stitches. And so I'm like, hmm, okay. So I just got on Amazon and you can buy little suture kits on Amazon for very cheap. And ah. so we ordered these suture kits, watched some YouTube videos together, and we got bananas. And you actually like make a little slice in the banana and we <laughs> learned how to do suturing together so here's like my six-year-old you know suturing bananas on the, <laughs> on the kitchen counter and you know we're just learning together and it's just it's just surprised me how wonderful it's really been for our family and how much they've learned so this is from nick hess in episode 105 so what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? Um, the most surprising thing would be just how children teach us. Like I, at first I didn't realize, you know, just when you're open and you have an open relationship with your children, you have a good relationship with your children and you're your children's friends. I mean, our children are our best friends. They truly teach you. They truly teach you about everything. There's some things that, my son will come up to me and talk to me about something in World War II, and he's only 11, and it's like something, oh, wow. Like, thank you for that information. <laughs> and, like, the knowledge they have and this, it's just, overall, it's just amazing, just the facts and the things that, like, truly, I don't believe my, my daughter, if my children were in school, I, the artists, the creativity they have, I think it would be stifled. I, it would just... Because they would have to come home and do homework, and they would have to do this. We'd constantly be on them, but the whole thing just allows them to be creative and flow, and just let everything flow. This natural living. This. I love that that idea of of flow. That is something that that I was totally um, surprised by, right? Because because before that, so much of our day is scheduled and organized and everything, and. Um, you kind of think hands off and not having that schedule that we just kind of, 
you know, sit or that's what you assume. We'll just kind of sit around and do nothing unless we kind of plan it. Right. But it's yeah. so wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and you're right about how much they they teach us, because once you're on equal footing as people, right, as just all human beings and everybody's just sharing what they find interesting with each other. It's it's amazing all of the bits and pieces that they pick up. And and it's so lovely when you can say, thank you, I didn't know that. And that happens so often, doesn't it? Every day. Every day it's something new. Every day it's just, and it's truly about freedom. It's freedom and to allow them to access to things, uh, um, to really access technology, to access the information on the Internet. And where they could go, I mean, when my younger kids... Uh, Still, I mean, the little ones don't know how to read, but they could talk into Google and ask that the little tablet anything they want in the world, mm-hmm. and that information is at their fingertips. And that's how it's that's the amazing part is when they're curious about something like the election. I mean, we don't really talk about politics, but they'll come up to us and talk about politics. Are are just a million things that you wouldn't think little kids would talk about, but that freedom and that that flow is just so magical. Just kids are interested in things they're interested in the world they're interested about a lot of things and when you give them that freedom to explore the world what it truly is they explore they learn and it's it's truly magical i love that word magical because it it does seem like that doesn't it Yeah. yeah this is from episode 110 with alan marshall so what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives well, um, there have been a lot of common surprises um, as far as how, uh, you know, how things are for the children, uh, you know, learning things in ways that, you know, you know, that that my wife and I grew up, you know, believing, or, you know, sort of tacitly aren't possible, like mm-hmm. learning to read in a week. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Um, you know um, with our oldest daughter uh, something that was really surprising for me uh, even after doing research and understanding the principles behind it uh, the fact that my daughter just decided to set her own bedtime at a certain point at a very early age without being you know coerced or told or even having a mention to her really um, you know was you know, my point of view before was that that was just not on the list of possibilities. Mm-hmm. But, you know, starting about age seven ish, seven or eight or so, she just decided she wanted to go to bed about nine o'clock every night and to wake up about six in the morning every morning. And that's what she still does all the time today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> the common point of view is that that's really not possible. That if you, you know, if you just let somebody, a child, stay up as long as they want, they'll stay up late all the time yeah yeah for their entire life and then you know sleep in unless they're given a reason not to but for and for some people maybe that's true but for her she prefers to go to bed early and wake up early uh, and there, there were some humorous times we had early on where we would ask if she might be willing to stay up a little later so that we would so that we wouldn't have to get up quite so early in the morning <laughs> back then we would need to get up with her when it was when we needed to be up with her to be safe mm-hmm. if you know we had the inconvenience of needing to get up at six in the morning with her uh, either my wife or I yeah. because that's what she heard <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun to see how they explore just all their choices, right? All their options and, and find what is unique to them. I always love hearing about all the different kids because they've all hit on things that, like you said, you totally unexpected, but they work so well for the individual, don't they? Yeah. And it ended up working great for, you know, how she, what she prefers to do and kind of how she, um, her priorities, it works perfectly for her. Um, I'm kind of a night owl, so it doesn't always work great for me, but um, <laughs> we work we work that out. Um, and you you had asked what was surprising. Uh, something else I think is surprising uh, and continues to kind of surprise me is how kind of how deep uh, schoolish thinking and schoolish 
uh, thoughts uh, kind of run, uh, you know, for, for us as the parents, you know, mm-hmm. I still find myself, you know, in, about the time that I think that I really understand and really have it all down and, you know, feel like I know how unschooling should work. Um, and it's good. And it's good. I have some confidence about it having done it for a long time, but I always discover a new schoolish thought or, you know, hear my father speaking, you know, mm. hear my father's words coming out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> inadvertently and, and have to, you know, uh, rededicate myself to thinking differently, uh, and to, and to doing things differently. Um, and again, you know, uh, intellectually, I knew that that would probably be the case from having thought about it and read about it for a long time, but then something like that will happen. And, uh, it's a surprise. <laughs> like, <What>? yes, <laughs> yeah, indeed. But... I still, you know, <laughs> that's such a great in. point yeah yeah exactly you don't you don't realize it. it's like it's just buried there buried really deep inside and then you know yes. things happen things happen and then all of a sudden that's been chipped free and out it pops right oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think that's that's i know like you said you can realize it intellectually i, I think something that's been helpful is is to also be be nice to myself when that happens. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. you need to work on it and everything, but not beat yourself up because that gets in the way of moving through it, doesn't it? That that just adds yet another layer you have to work through. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, just, I don't think it's really helpful to you know feel like it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you know, all parents are like that. That's just the way it's meant to be. That's not exactly. good, but also it's not good to be, you know, to be so down on yourself that you made a mistake that you don't have the, you know, you're not an emotional, uh, you don't have the emotional, you know, ability to correct the mistake to do better next time. Yeah, that, yeah, because so you're not like throwing up your hands. It will get you to that yeah, same point yeah. where it's like you throw up your hands, I can't do any better. And this is just the way <laughs> That's it just is, the way right? It is. <laughs> Because, yeah. like you said, it's amazing what you can find down there. <laughs> that's like, wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, my, my oldest is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead. I was just going to say, my oldest is 14, so mm-hmm. puberty and the teenage years have recently brought up some of those surprising, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, this is. <laughs> here's here's my dad coming out. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's true as they, they reach different milestones, different ages, things that you just haven't thought about in Mm -hmm. this context, in the context of unschooling, um, they just haven't come up for been excavated to be thought about really. So it's true. So many things like, well, and even as young adults and there's so many, um, conventional messages that we've grown up with that. We will encounter along the way. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hear what Anne Rousseau shares in episode 127. So what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded for you guys? I think for me at this point in my journey, what I have been surprised about the most was how much I had to let go and then how much I had to also insert back in. Once I let go, there was also places that it was okay for me to get back. I I was almost afraid at a certain point to mess it up Mm -hmm. and, and insert myself too much. And what surprised me at this point is how I have inserted myself with my children as partners with my children. Um, And it's sort of like I stepped way, 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 way back. And then as I come back in, I can do it with more uh, partnership or equality or understanding of, okay, now I really see you. I really see that you've got this goal and I can come in and help you with this. My oldest son, um, I don't know if he's dyslexic, so we never would have had a diagnosis at all, but 
but he has what I would think is dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And certainly my brother did and my father did, and it runs in my family. Um, And reading just was not coming easy to him. It just wasn't coming easy. And here he was 11 and then 12, and it just wasn't coming for him. And I had sort of was like, I'm hands off. I don't know. I'm hands off. And then he came to me and he was like, I really want to, I really want to try to figure this out. And we found this program that was brilliant. I don't know what they did, but I had never heard of anything like that before. They used these pictographs that represented sounds and it just helped him decode in a way that was smooth and easy and comprehensible. And it's something that I would have been in the early years, like, you're going to have to do this and this. Yeah, yeah. This is my idea. And I, I had dropped all of that. And I was like, okay, somehow, some way, by the time he's 18, he's going to read. It was one of my big fears mm-hmm. around unschooling. And then as we both approached the problem together, and I was able to research and find this program, and then he was able to put his mind into the and desire into doing that. Then we came together in partnership and it just started sort of magically unfolding for him. Um, and that was one of my huge fears was how are we going to get something to happen like that if it doesn't seem like it's happening naturally or easily? Um, and it helped me look at reading with the other kids and realize that It doesn't have to be absolutely completely hands-off if you look at what they are wanting and then supplement that with what you know as a partnership, not as a dictator. And so with the other boys, I've been able to look at their style of wanting to learn to read differently and support them in this easy and loving way where always before it was me just being afraid, like, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. What do you mean you don't remember what mm is? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just so much fear on my part. And so for me to come in at it, like, I don't need to be afraid. I need to be open to seeing what is right in front of me. What is the truth here really? And the truth here really is that we can come together and be partners and solve a lot of problems and meet a lot of goals together and keep fear, you know, aside, put it on the table. I love that, Neil. And that ties back to that question we were talking about earlier too, right? About fears. So often um, when we're fearful of something, we pull back from it. Yeah. Right? Like you were saying. And, and especially if we think um, when we're seeing things as we do at the beginning as hands off, right? Because yeah. we need to get to that point because at first we thought hands on, we should be directing everything. Right. Right. So to stop that, we pull back, right? Yeah. We don't know what we're replacing that with yet. We're like, right. okay, I know I'm not doing that. I know I'm not going to be directing them and, and putting them through my paces to meet my expectations. Um, and I think what develops in that hands hands off, but I think we're, that's also a time when we're learning a lot about unschooling and we're more watching our kids than directing them, Yeah. right? And I think what starts to develop there, because we react when they come to us, right? And we help yeah. them and we support them. But I think what's building in there is trust oh, yeah. between us, right? And then yeah. with that trust then we realize that's when we can come back, right? Because that when they trust us fully and completely, that's when we can be partners. Whoa. Right? Yes. I, I don't know. This is hitting me like <laughs> this is a big, big, big deal. Yeah. And it's not, not just in unschooling, but in close relationships. Yep. You know, so there's a huge coming around of trusting. Yeah. Trusting, yeah. And then then when your partners... It, it, it doesn't, then you're just working with them. You're just trying to help them meet their goals. And if it's, you know, I really want to figure out how to read if we can, if we can try and find something, you know what I mean? If we can find a way, it doesn't have to be something. Sometimes I know with my kids, it was, you know, stages where we spent more time playing reading kinds of games and noticing, um, reading, uh, words, uh, 
it was just a time when we pay more attention to it in our lives, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but there are other things where there's more other kinds of formal supports, you know, outside helps, whatever it is. But it's again, it's it's completely different because it's not us imposing it. It's us saying, "Hey, I found this. There's this possibility if you." want to pursue it and we bring the knowledge that we have as much as we know about it and then we can explore it with them yeah and have these conversations to see if it connects if they if they're engaged if they want to keep going and 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 them approaching it and using it the way they want to right like you said, he right. was he was right. so engaged with it and enjoying it you know and maybe he didn't and you moved on to something else but we're never taking um, agency away from them or control. Right. right? And but before, now we're just more hands on helping. Yeah. Before, for me, it was like I was inserting my expectations, mm-hmm. even though I didn't want to. Yeah. I, I, that was just my sort of mode of operation or old family pattern of how do you become a mother? How do you do this? You insert expectations and then show them how they're not meeting those expectations, <laughs> which feels horrible in relationship. Nobody yeah. likes that. And nobody really likes being told what to do, to be mm-hmm. honest. When somebody, even when I'm like, oh, I don't feel so good. And then one of my kids even, or my husband is like, well, you know, you could do this or this or this. I'm kind of like, I just want to feel bad for a second. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. know how to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to share that. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't, I don't need directions. You know, I've gotten to a point sometimes, you know, with my husband or whatever, it's like, you know, I want to, I want to share something, but I don't need help fixing it. I know mm. I'll fix it after. And like, that's he, really like, good. Listen. And he's like, sure, go for it. And then, then I'll say, and you know, <laughs> but it really helps. good. It takes, it takes a while to get to that point to realize, you know, that that's something that, that happens and that you don't like it. So it's, it's realizing what we want out of the moment because that that's part of connecting too with another person. Right. You know, right. You know, when my kids, sometimes I'll be like, well, you could do this. I don't want to hear that right now. And Mm -hmm. you know what? That's something that when, um, if we're out and about and more conventional parents hear that they think that is like a kid talking back to their parent or whatever, you know, and that's something bad, but no, it's, it's just, um, Every, because then you see where they are, right? You can, you can, right. when they're sharing what they want and don't want or need and don't need in that moment, that's more great information for us to help them in that moment. Yeah. Right? It's not, yeah. not about control. And to go right into problem solving takes away that space that I was talking about yeah. before of letting some of the feelings arise inside of a space of discomfort, of mm-hmm. unknowing, uncertainty of just that open space of questioning is so valuable. Mm -hmm. And I know myself as a mother, it's so easy for me in my fear to take that space away. Say, I don't ever want you to feel that uncertainty. You want to know what these, what some solutions are or how do you want me to help? But like you said, this is brilliant. If I would just go in and say, do you want me to listen or do you want me to help you problem solve right now? Mm -hmm. Which is most useful for you? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, that's that is such a great point about that space because we don't i don't want like you were talking about how you don't want your kid your child you know to feel sad upset you don't want them in that in that space right and you don't want to leave them there if they're trying to get out but there's so much value in learning about being yeah in that space right um because they're going to be there yeah. Right. So, so to be able to support their experience of it while they're younger and you're there to help them process through it because it's going to happen. It happens to it's life, right? There mm-hmm. are going to be these moments and to be able to um, be there to support them through it, uh, just to sit with them. Like often support is just sitting beside them. Yeah. And you can feel those feelings. Yeah. And just be there in that moment yeah. of, Wow, this hurts my to watch someone hurting and there's nothing I can do. That hurts. And just let it let it rise up and um do what it does, which usually it sort of floats away eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I mean, even my kids know they'll be like oh, 
I'm just going to sleep on it because I know it's going to look better in the morning. But, you know, they're 12 and 13 telling me this. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, that's been my experience too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. This is from episode 134 with Virginia Warren. What has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? What's surprising about it? What's surprising is the way it seeps into everything. Unschooling principles apply to much more than homeschooling. That feels ridiculous to even say. Um, Once you... Once you decide to look and see if what you believe about school is really true or not, and you find out that you've made some mistakes in your thinking, things that you haven't examined, things you haven't bothered to, I don't want to say haven't bothered, that sounds dismissive, um, there, I guess, I'm sorry, it's coming out so That's okay, that's okay. A better way to, uh, I think it's about bias. About what, um, sorry? Bias. Bias, yes. Bias, um, unconscious bias. Um, it's normal. It, it, another word for bias is like a shortcut. Like, there are, there are positive biases and there are negative biases and not all bias is bad. Um, you know, being biased toward patients, like you think everything else equal, I'm just going to try and, 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 you know, stay calm and, and, and see, you know, what the application of more patients to take it. Um, like if you never, if you're not aware of your bias, you cannot compensate for it. If you don't know that you are, it's very easy for bias to feel like absolute truth. Like for people to feel like the same thing we were talking, I I mentioned earlier about people wanting to say this art is good and this art is bad. That's bias. Because they're, what they're saying is the art I like is good and the art that I don't like is bad. Um, and I believe that de-schooling puts you into a habit of looking for bias and trying to overcome it and also looking for ways to try to form biases which actually make your life easier. Like, say yes more. That's a bias. Other things equal, I'm going to I'm gonna say yes. I'm going to be biased towards saying yes unless there's a really good reason not to. Um, and once I started noticing how much of the attitudes that I had about school were part of unconscious biases, things that you learn, like school is where learning happens. That's a bias. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started applying that to other areas of my life, stuff that I hadn't um, really thought about all that much. And one of those things was um, how... I choose or choose not to conform to um, uh, mainstream beauty. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it much before I had daughters, whether or how much it mattered if I decided to wear makeup or not wear makeup and remove body hair or not remove body hair. Um, 
and I've, <laughs> I've come to a much different position on these things now as a mother of daughters than I had before when I was just a daughter. Uh, <laughs> and I, uh, I don't want to do a lot of the, the beauty performance that is uh, part of our culture anymore, but I also don't want to like ruin it for my kids if they want to, because it can be fun. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to, I don't want to demonize shaving your legs or not shaving your legs. Uh, if they choose to remove their body hair or wear makeup, I want it to be, well, I want it to be, is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I, all, all I'm trying to say is that I hope that they will be able to do it for their own reasons instead of just, I, I can't tell you how many times a day I watch a video, I should say how many times in a week, but I watch a video on, on YouTube or something and there's young women talking about something or other and they, they use the phrase, I had to shave my legs. Nobody has to shave their legs, <laughs> but it's okay to shave your legs if you want to. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the path I'm trying to to, to chart and I don't know that I'm doing a great job. Um, maybe I should be more strident. <laughs> may, you know, maybe, maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm still not sure what I should be doing uh, on this. Um, I think it's interesting that we feel we need to be sure you know, I mean, and it's, it's something that's so super hard to talk about because, you know, on one hand, because it's like, you know, there, our children are intelligent human beings and they're going to, you know, figure this stuff out. They are going to be living their lives. They're going to be getting input and, I think one of the, you know, when you were talking way back to what this question was, what surprised you um, about how unschooling is unfolding and it's, and you said it's how wide it ends up reaching, right? So we're yes. not, we're not making their world smaller so that they only know what we tell them, right? Um mm -hmm. Because so on one hand we are so deeply we're we're very connected with our children and we love them very much and we support them as much as we can but we're supporting them in experiencing a larger world and they're going to have um, so many ways that they come across this information so and just living in an environment where they where choices are cultivated right? That we make choices for ourselves. And so whether we, we don't really need to know exactly whether or not we're doing the right thing, saying this or saying that, because that's one moment. It's one thing from us. And we've already, I was going to say taught them. No, we already live with them in an <laughs> environment where what we say is not the be all and end all, mm -hmm. you know, but we it's have certainty. A Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Certainty shuts down learning also, as you're saying, yeah, being yeah. sure, if you're sure, well, you need any more information. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're sure and you got new information, maybe you wouldn't be sure anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. And those are the uncon unconscious biases. You know, <laughs> we're spinning right around this. It's beautiful because it's the unconsciousness of it that's that makes things difficult. That makes us think we have a right answer, right? We can share what we think. There's this like 
because so often in questions and everything, people are like, uh, you know, what do I do with my kids in this situation? And so often the answer is, well, talk to your kids, right? Have the conversations. There is no like right, wrong answer for anything. It's what makes sense for them. Here's what Tatiana Plachenko shares in episode 149. So what has surprised you most about your journey so far? So what surprised me most was how much joy there is in being in my kids' company, in helping them along with whatever they need help with. Um, in preparing, you know, yummy food for them, in um, creating the environment that everybody wants to be in. Um, And it's interesting that that environment that I'm creating for my family, then a lot of people love to visit and just to be in the space that we create. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, like the message out there is very different. Um, Like people post on social media how happy they are that their kids are finally in school, like come the school year and like they're celebrating and how they want them to go to bed early so that they can have time for themselves. And uh, I used to think that too, like when... um, the kids were so young. I had two kids under the age of two. And I was thinking, you know, like, oh, once they go to school, like, finally, I'm going to have a break. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But like, it's truly surprising what a gift it is to share this life together. And I think this life can be that joyous only after you've let go of all those issues when you're not trying to control them, when you are just there in partnership to, you know, have fun together and just enjoy the life together. Yeah, that's, that's such a great point. When you get to that, like we were talking about earlier, right? Even in, in relationships, right? When you get to the point where you're equals, you're all human beings and you can connect with them. There is joy and fun. You're, you're being with another person. It doesn't matter what their age is, right? You can connect and engage and, and have fun together. That's it. Yeah. And I think there was also sometimes a time when I would get stuck with, you know, what, like, what about me? And what about me? And what about my interests? And like, what am I doing with my life? But I think that the equilibrium is really towards taking care of the kids when the kids are much younger, because there is that physical aspect of mothering. Mm -hmm. But as they get older, I find that me and my interests get very intertwined with our days and the flow of our days and everything, like everybody gets taken care of. Yeah. I love that observation. It's so true. I mean, when you have younger kids, it is a lot of hands-on physical help, right? You know, you're getting food and you're taking them, you know, here and there and you have to get help them get coats on and boots on, especially in Ottawa. <laughs> um, so it's a huge it's a it's a huge revelation when when you um, understand that that as when you start to notice that, as you say, your interest just comes up because you're having conversations with them. Right. You're doing just just hanging out together and the things we like naturally come up because they're often the example that we reach to when we're in a conversation oh you know I had that happen when I was doing xyz or whatever and like you said it's so beautiful how the stuff that we love intertwines with our life because as they get older we're having more conversations like that right we have a little bit more space to do to do things maybe we're whether it's, uh, you know, art when drawing or crafting or reading or whatever, and they come in the room and they see what you're doing and you share a little update. It's, it's yeah. really fun. That's such a cool observation. 
And it's not only, it's now, it, it's now both ways. It's not just us sharing. Now they're sharing back and supporting us in some way. Like we went for a walk um, as a family and I was preparing for my very first Facebook live interview mm-hmm. and I was having all this doubt and I wasn't sure how to go about it. And the kids were coaching me through it. Because they've seen so many live videos and they were saying, well, this YouTuber is doing this and you have to have an intro and you have to do this and that. And I'm like, whoa, guys, like, how do you even, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Right? Absolutely. Our lives can flow together so well, you know, when you... I think that's another big step. Another layer is opening up, not, not thinking about our like adult stuff and kids stuff. That's, that's yeah. not it. It's, it's our stuff. The things that we are all as individuals um, interested in. And it's amazing the connections and, and, and just the support and the information that, that our kids can bring because they're awesome. <laughs> Support. It's that it's so nice to have that support and yeah. have somebody like truly care, right? It's um, oh, you want to do this? Yeah, well, this is how you do it. And I, I really, really felt it um, recently. Like another aha for me: kids went to a birthday party. We dropped them off, uh, Igor and I, and then Igor and I went for a walk. In we have this beautiful Gatineau Park. We went for a walk. And we came across a lake with beavers and we could just stand there and watch them. They came so close. They were swimming around and we were like taking pictures of them, like close up pictures. It was so beautiful. And on the way back, I was walking. It was a narrow path. I was walking in the front and Igor was at the back. And uh, I was saying, you know, what do they eat? And Igor was like, Siri, what do beavers eat? <laughs> and then Siri would tell us. And I'm like, and do they hibernate? And he would look it up. And he just kept looking up all my questions. And I felt like so nice that somebody actually took time to answer my questions. And, you know, uh, and I knew more and I was truly curious. And I thought, well, that's what, you know, I should be doing for my kids, not I don't know, or I'll look it up later. Actually, look it up. Like I do, but I, I felt, I felt it. You know, yeah. like that aha that I felt. Yeah, like like you were in in their shoes again. <laughs> back back yeah. to the Anna story, right? And and that feeling of having your questions being treated as valuable, right? Yes, as important. Like being seen, right? Being seen. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. This is from episode 150 with Sue Elvis. What has surprised you most about your family's unschooling adventures? Well, I guess that we set out to find the perfect way to educate our kids. And we were surprised to find out how unschooling took over our whole lives. Ah. And we have learned so much about ourselves, uh, you know, not just our children, but each, each of us has learned a lot about ourselves and each other. And I think the thing we've learned the most about is unconditional love, how that has drawn our family so much, so close together that in accepting each other, accepting each other's talents, each other's goals, are uh, so helping, encouraging, trusting each other, not worrying about mistakes, but forgiving each other that type of thing that we learnt to love each other without condition. And that has really brought us very, very uh, strong bonds. To, you know, we're, we're a strong family. And I think that is the most surprising thing. I never thought that when we set out on this journey 26 years ago that the end product would be love, would be our family. I thought maybe well-educated children I didn't think we'd all get involved in our own learning as well. The things that we've all been able to achieve and to see everybody develop as a person. So the the relationship's there, but also it is so exciting seeing each individual person in the family blossom to use their talents to become 
the people they can be. And that, that's sort of a lifetime process. But yeah, we're at school growing up. I didn't feel that I was anyone very special at all. I wasn't popular. I was told I didn't have any particular talents. Uh, I was clever enough, but there was nothing. Nobody gave me the opportunity to discover what I was really interested in, nothing that made me feel excited. And I feel that everybody in our family is excited about who they are, what they've got to share, and not only within the family, but we want to go with uh, outside the family and see what we can do with our talents, share them with other people. And because we've got a strong family home base, we can go out there in the world, support and encourage each other. And who knows, you know, what else we will do. Uh, it's just an exciting journey, I think. And it's just one that's not going to end, uh, unlike homeschooling it ends, you know, age 18. This unschooling journey is just going to keep on going and going. And even though my kids are getting older and I am not no longer going to have um, children under 18 for very much longer, I've been another four years in my Youngest daughter will be 18, but who knows what's ahead? I think we don't know, do we, that the opportunities that come up we cannot see. We go places that we have never imagined, and that's what's exciting, I think. Wow. Yeah, that that was beautiful, Sue. And I love that that it, it's the excitement, right? It's the openness, the uh, we don't know what's going to happen, right? It's it's an adventure. We're we're just open to what crosses our paths that we find interesting. And I loved how you talked about how they are, you know, excited to be themselves. What a great story, you know, juxtaposed with your experience growing up, right? That that when we're in school, in that we're you know, doing the same things as everybody else and we have to follow this path, we don't have that time to discover who we are and what makes us unique and the things we find interesting. And even, you know, one thing I love seeing over the years with my kids, the different things that they found interesting, but then noticing the thread of, of what's uniquely them that, that flows through all of those interests, right? There's just a little something in each one. It's like, that's why that particular child found that interesting and that and that. You can see those connections, can't you? You can. And I think it's very sad that when we are temp we could be tempted to uh, make our kids be who we think they are. And then when we let them be themselves, it's just remarkable, you know, that each and every one of us has so much to offer. And if we are allowed to be the people we are, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting, but where will we all go? And I think that's, I, I've come to terms with the fact that I'm not that bad a person after all. That, you know, that, and that sounds terrible, but leaving school, leaving uni, I felt like I was a disappointment to everybody. I mean, I got the marks I needed, but... I didn't fulfill people's expectations. People wanted me to do this, that, and the other, and I didn't. And now unschooling, I feel just like my children, that I have something to offer, and I'm not that bad after all, that I have a place in the world. You know, you understand that? Oh, me? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it, it's what a way for us to discover ourselves too, right? It's It takes away that measure. Um, you know, because I remember when I, even when I left work to, to stay home with the kids, it, that was one of the biggest pieces, you know, how am I going to, who am I now, right? Because I was just so used to measuring myself uh, by that conventional yardstick, right? Of, of accomplishments, of that productivity. Um, but it was just just amazing how we too, as we work through those layers, we can discover who we really are and the ways that we, uh, the things we love to do, the interests that we have, and the way we we shine. And and parenting being one of those interests that that we discover, right? And and ways to connect with our kids and just appreciating and loving 
that we can l- just live with our kids. Like you said, one of the most surprising things was how this was really, when we started, a question of how we were going to educate our kids, right? What were we going to replace school with if they weren't going to go to school? And that it grew into being how we choose to live our lives, right? Yes, yes. And finally, let's hear what Jeremy Stewart has to say in episode 154. So I was curious, what has surprised you most so far about how unschooling has unfolded in your lives? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, it's interesting because, as you know, it's a, it's a continually evolving process. Yeah. And, you know, w- w- when, I, when I look at this process, the only thing I can really go back to is my own sort of personal experience of it. Like, how has it been for me? And, 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 and what sort of roadblocks and things do I run into along the way? And so, so much of this process is about, has been about de-schooling myself, you know, like unraveling the sort of conditioned ideas that I was given either by my parents or through my traditional schooling that I have to then kind of disassemble in order to see beyond them. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, for instance, like, as I said, I, you know, I, I grew up in a, in a family that, you know, wonderful parents, they did the best they could, but my father was very authoritarian, mm-hmm. very strict, you know, laid down the law. You didn't question that. And, and that's not how I am. Um, and, 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 and yet a part of that is in there still. Yeah. You know, I, I hear that voice come up in me and, and that's been one of the biggest um, challenges, I guess, in all of this is when, when, when that comes up, when that raises its head, I have to catch it and go, wait, that's, that's my parent. That's my parents' voice or my father's voice. That's not mine. So mm-hmm. how do I, how do I shift that? How do I, you know, let that go? And, and, and that's a constant process that's is evolving. And so, you know, with the unschooling thing, because, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty sort of loose about it, you know, um, you know, my daughter doesn't have set bedtimes and has never had set bedtimes and, and things like that. So, and, and it's funny, I, th- I think one of the things that comes back is that she, she questions us, you know, and, and throws stuff back at us, which sometimes is really disarming because uh, I could never have done that with my father. Like to question him would, 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 you know, the system wasn't done. Yeah, yeah. And so, so every now and again, she'll do this, and I'll, you know, we'll be talking about something, and, and she'll say, "Well, I don't want to do that." And I'm just like, "What?" You know, <laughs> part of me is just like, "Oh," and then I go, "Wait, <laughs> hang on a sec." Oh, that's right. We raised you to 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 to, to have this autonomy. We raised you to have this independence and to have your own voice and to be able to use your own voice. So, okay, good. That's fine. Let's talk about that then. <laughs> I know, I know yeah, but, that, that first, that initial reaction, right? It's, what? Exactly. That in, yeah. My initial reaction is what, the, you know, how dare you question I'm the parent. And then I'm like, well, no, no, wait a minute. No, that, you know, let's back off from that a little bit. So, so I think that the surprise, you know, to come back to your question, the sort of mm-hmm. the surprise is how often that still comes up, even though we've been doing this for 14 years, you know, um, there's still traces of that old um, paradigm that are sort of buried in me that I just wish I could expunge forever, you know, just get rid of. But, you know, that's part of my upbringing. And, and, you know, I think that the, the way sort of conditioned by our parents and by our upbringing, and, and certainly we can escape that um, largely, but there's always little traces of it in there. So I think the surprises are things like that. Yeah. And then the other one uh, that I really like is that um, w- when I'm really paying attention and I'm really listening and I'm, I'm listening to my daughter and what she's saying and what she's um, kind of putting forth as her interests or what she wants to do. And I, and I step out of the way and I back off and just so, okay, fine. That sounds great. And then let her just run with it. Amazing things happen. And, and that's what, and then it always really surprises me. I'm going, wow, that, that really worked out well. Like, why was I so hung up that somehow that wasn't going to work out, you know? Because I think trust is such a huge part of this. You know, I, I think it's the central piece, like learning to really trust that somehow or other, these kids who are unschooled, they're going to turn out fine, right? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you provide a nurturing environment, if you're supportive, if you can connect with them and, and, and um, you know, not put up barriers and, and don't impose your own 
uh, you know, sort of authority on, well, this is how it should be. Um, and just allow it to naturally unfold, incredible things happen. So I'm always really surprised by that. Even now, after 14 years, I still get moments of like, wow, that was amazing. You know, so, that was just such an incredible moment. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I, I am still amazed, you know, even now. I don't know if I added up. Maybe we're 16, 16 or 17 years, yeah. you know, and, and my kids are all young adults now. But I am yeah. still amazed at the value. I think once I wrote, um, I, I, I was talking about not jumping in and adding my two cents all the time. Right. Right. Because it, it was actually more valuable to not give my two cents because stepping back and letting them take, like you're supporting them and helping them accomplish what they they want to accomplish like because you know when you say step back you worry that people think oh okay so i'm not going to do anything i'm going to leave them to do their own thing no of course you help them but yes they take things in the directions that work for them and their directions that we could never have even imagined right right that's that trust piece and why that's so important right yeah, absolutely. And, and it is so easy, I find, you know, as a parent and, and uh, to, as you said, like put your two cents in. Well, here's how I think it should be. Here's what I think you should do. You know, here's, here's what I think why will happen. This? Right. Why don't you do this? And, and then all of those, if you look really carefully at all those statements, what's really behind that is my expectation. Mm -hmm. Here's how I think. Here's what I think you should be doing. Yeah. Here's why I think you need to do this. But it's got really nothing to do with what they want. That's yeah. all about what I want. And, what and I think I they exactly should be doing, right? it, it's all part of our experience in the world, right? The way we right. seen that play out within our paradigm, right? And and our expectations right. and just the way we look at the world. But they look at the world in such a different way. And even the things they're choosing to do, they can be choosing them for reasons that we have no clue about. You know, right. I mean, they're trying to get something out of it that when they say they want to do something, you know, we, our brain naturally jumps to, oh, well, because the, they want to do this, because they want to, you know, get this out of it. But no, it can be something completely different. And when you give them that space right. and trust to do it, you're right. Your mind is blown so many different times, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I guess, you know, it's, it's a constant surprise all the time, you yeah. know, and it's a constant, it's a constant balancing act between, you know, n knowing when to kind of step in a little bit. And, and, and provide a bit more structure and guidance and when to just completely back off and say, well, I'm here, I'll support this. I have no, I, no clue where this is going <laughs> and I maybe don't even understand it, but that's okay. Yeah. And just trust that it's okay. And, you know, it'll either work out or not work out. And that's okay too. That's okay either, too. You know, whether even if it doesn't work out, that's okay too. You know, and, and because life isn't perfect. I mean, you know, I've done many things in my life that I failed at miserably. And it's okay. I'm still here. I'm still surviving. You know, it's part of my experience. It's part of being a human being. But, you know, for some reason, we get so hung up on wanting to control the outcome, getting attached to a certain situation. And you know, this is how it should work out. You know, it's like, well, no, we don't know how it's going to work out. Just go yeah. for it. You know, trust the universe, you know, trust your innate sense of self and amazing stuff happens. But that's a very, very hard thing. Uh, to live in. It's a very hard paradigm to kind of be operating from all the time because I think we're bombarded with messages, you know, by the society in general about what should be happening and what you should be doing and what, you know, how you should be living and what you should be buying and, you know, yes. what you should be pursuing and all it's just constant, like constant how, mess. Exactly. And how bad it is to be wrong. Right. Right. That judgment of, of, of supposed failure Right. Um, is, is just, just everywhere. And, you know, it's something from very early years, like you were saying, the, the paradigm that we grew up in, the environment we grew up in, yeah. um, is something that we're always working on because that's a huge thing, you know, judgment and shame as, yeah. as, as yeah. parenting tools and just, just as tools to judge other, other people, right? They're so prevalent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We better move on. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get pretty deep with this. <laughs> I know. I know. I can keep going on just on that one question. Like, for, yeah, it's safe. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. 
While you're there, be sure to check out the second book in my Living Joyfully with Unschooling series, Free to Live, Create a Thriving Unschooling Home. In it, I dive into the four characteristics that I found helped unschooling flourish in our home. Curiosity, patience, strong relationships, and trust. One reviewer wrote, Really enjoyed this short and sweet book. It has marvelous one-liners, and though I'm not an underliner, I found myself underlining on every page. Another said, I believe it would benefit any homeschooler or parent to read this book as it re-emphasizes the importance of the relationship between a parent and a child in the learning process. I plan to reread this book. It is rich and full of gems. Give yourself some time to absorb it before rushing into unschooling. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.